But you don't have one. The shame must be unbearable. As a man, as a king, without an heir, with a north side. From the gritty streets of the Bronx to the star-studded boulevards of Hollywood, Wesley Snipes. Cinematic Journey was nothing short of meteoric. Look, I don't need a history lesson. Come on, Hal! Where the goddamn guns? However, like any gripping tale, his path was intertwined with twists of fate and choices that led to unexpected turns. The tragic career and the sad end of Wesley Snipes delves deep into the life of this iconic actor. Hey! Hey in there! Bring your asses out here, I want to make a complaint! Tracing the pinnacle moments of his fame and the shadows that eventually dimmed his starlight. As we embark on this exploration, one can't help but wonder what truly unfolded behind the spotlight's glare. Early life and beginnings in the world of acting. Born in 1962, Wesley Snipes emerged from the bustling, harsh streets of the Bronx. This environment, teeming with life, struggle, and tenacity, would prove to be the crucible that forged the resilience and spirit of a budding actor. However, before the allure of acting tugged at his heartstrings, it was the disciplined world of martial arts that caught young Wesley's attention. From an early age, he became deeply enthralled with martial arts, immersing himself in the techniques of karate. By the age of 12, he began his training in the Japanese system, focusing on goju and the explained styles. These disciplines, requiring both physical prowess and mental focus, laid the foundation for his later roles, many of which would hinge upon these very skills. As the years went by, the vibrant world of theater began to beckon him. While the punches and kicks of martial arts provided an outlet for his energy, the realm of acting opened up a universe where he could channel his emotions, bringing characters to life. Snipes soon found a second passion in acting and started participating in plays. The allure of the stage and the thrill of embodying different characters drew him in. And it wasn't long before he realized that this was more than just a hobby. It was a calling. His dedication and talent did not go unnoticed. Recognizing his potential, Snipes earned a place at the prestigious Institute of Fine Arts at New York University. This was a dream come true, an opportunity to hone his craft and immerse himself in the world of theater and film. However, life, as it often does, threw a curveball. A sudden need to move to Orlando interrupted his studies, temporarily stalling his dreams. But the pull of the Big Apple was too strong to resist. By 1980, he was back in New York, not just resuming his education, but also forming a traveling group of actors. Together with friends, they roamed the neighborhoods, performing plays and leaving an indelible mark on their audiences. Rising to stardom with Michael Jackson. The 1980s was an era defined by its music, and at the forefront of this musical revolution stood the indomitable Michael Jackson. Known as the king of pop, Jackson's influence permeated every corner of the entertainment industry, shaping it with his unique style, groundbreaking music videos, and undeniable talent. As Jackson's star continued to shine brightly, a young Wesley Snipes, still navigating the early stages of his career, found himself unexpectedly pulled into the king of pop's orbit. The year was 1987, and Jackson was working on the music video for his song, Bad. Directed by the illustrious Martin Scorsese, the video was ambitious, intending to be more than just a series of dance sequences. It aimed to be cinematic, a short film that told a compelling story. For one of the leading roles, the production was looking for someone who could hold their own against the global superstar that was Michael Jackson. Enter Wesley Snipes. The character in question was Minnie Max, a gang leader and the video's primary antagonist. Though there were rumors that the role was initially meant for another prominent musician, Prince, it was. Snipes' raw talent and undeniable screen presence that caught the attention of both Scorsese and Jackson. Snipes, in his audition, showcased a unique blend of intensity and charisma, adapting his performance to what he perceived as Scorsese's preferred acting style. His gamble paid off, securing him the coveted role. The Bad video showcased a dramatic face-off between Jackson's character and Snipes' Minnie Max. Their electric confrontation in a subway station became one of the most memorable moments in music video history. Snipes portrayed his character with a mix of menace and allure, 
making Minnie Max a worthy adversary to Jackson's protagonist. This performance, seen by millions around the world, thrust Snipes into the global spotlight. Off the set, the dynamic between Jackson and Snipes was markedly different. During the filming, a genuine friendship blossomed between the two. Their camaraderie was evident, with Snipes often recounting in later interviews how he and Jackson forged a bond during the video's production. You know, I, had a, I was a big fan of his. I was very um, admirable. I mean, I admired, I admired a, um, his relationship with... Uh, um, uh, uh, what's that actor's name? Uh, Robert De Niro. Uh, Robert De Niro, <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> the mutual respect they held for each other's craft transcended the professional environment, leading to a deep personal connection. Following Jackson's untimely passing, Snipes spoke fondly of their time together, referring to the King of Pop as an angel sent to inspire and evoke beauty in a chaotic world. The impact of the bad video on Snipes' career trajectory cannot be understated. Hollywood took notice of the actor who could hold his own against one of the biggest stars on the planet. Doors that were previously closed began to swing open, presenting Snipes with opportunities that would define the next phase of his career. His portrayal of Minimax not only demonstrated his versatility as an actor, but also his ability to captivate audiences. Transition into Hollywood's A-list. With the spotlight firmly on him after the success of Michael Jackson's bad video, Wesley Snipes. Ascent to Hollywood's A-list was meteoric. The late 80s and 90s marked a transformative era in cinema, and Snipes, with his undeniable charisma and talent, found himself at the forefront of this movement, navigating both the spotlight and the shadows of fame. His first major cinematic break came in the form of the sports comedy Wildcats in 1986. Though the film revolved around football and was led by Goldie Hawn, it became a significant platform for both Snipes and fellow actor Woody Harrelson. This film not only showcased Snipes' acting prowess, but also hinted at his versatility, a trait that would become a hallmark of his career. The year 1987 further solidified his growing reputation. Hollywood, having taken notice of the young actor's talent, presented him with opportunities to collaborate with some of the industry's most iconic figures. Snipes starred in New Jack City, a crime thriller directed by Mario Van Peebles. His portrayal of Nino Brown, a New York City drug lord, was both chilling and compelling, earning him critical acclaim. Around the same period, Snipes began his collaborations with director Spike Lee, an association that would prove to be one of the most fruitful of his career. In Mo Better Blues, 1990, Snipes played the role of Shadow Henderson, a saxophonist. His ability to delve deep into his character's psyche was evident, and the film showcased his range as he transitioned effortlessly between drama and comedy. This partnership with Lee continued with Jungle Fever in 1991, where Snipes once again demonstrated his knack for portraying layered characters with depth and authenticity. But it wasn't just serious roles that Snipes excelled in. The early 90s also saw him star in White Men Can't Jump, a sports comedy where he reunited with Woody Harrelson. Their on-screen chemistry was palpable, and the film was both a critical and commercial success. Their camaraderie, both on and off-screen, became the stuff of Hollywood legend. As the 90s progressed, Snipes' star continued to rise. He shared the screen with some of the industry's most prominent names, holding his own against established veterans. One such notable collaboration was with Sylvester Stallone in the action-packed film Demolition Man. Playing the role of Simon Phoenix, Snipes portrayed one of the most memorable antagonists of the action genre. His ability to infuse the character with both menace and charm made Phoenix unforgettable. <laughs> yes! Now, this is what I'm talking about. How do you get in here? This role, alongside Stallone's John Spartan, became iconic, with Snipes stealing the show and once again proving that he was more than capable of standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hollywood's best. Martial arts and its influence on his career. In Hollywood, actors come with a myriad of skills, but for Wesley Snipes, it was his profound expertise in martial arts that gave him an edge over many. This prowess was not just a hobby or a casual interest, but a deeply ingrained aspect of his persona, nurtured from a very young age. 
His commitment to the discipline, combined with his undeniable talent as an actor, created a synthesis that the cinematic world had seldom seen. There is Popoto, my daughter. Perhaps your son can be... Uh, I... <laughs> but you don't have one. The shame must be unbearable. Growing up in the Bronx, a place where survival often meant asserting one's presence, martial arts offered young Wesley more than just self-defense techniques. It provided him with discipline, focus, and an understanding of the intricate balance between mind and body. By the age of 12, he had already embarked on his martial arts journey, training in the Japanese system of goju. As the years passed, his passion for the art grew, leading him to explore other styles like Shotokan Karate, Shaolin Kung Fu, Filipino Jiu-Jitsu, Taekwondo, Hapkido, and the dance-infused Capoeira. We're doing everything from Wushu, uh, Shaolin, we're doing uh, Jiu-Jitsu, Aikido, Aikijitsu. We're throwing some Ping Jack Silat in there, we're doing a little Capoeira, some jailhousing, and some straight up, I'm going to bust you. This extensive training in various martial arts forms gave Snipes an advantage when it came to action roles. Unlike many actors who required doubles or extensive training for fight scenes, Snipes could perform many of his stunts authentically. This authenticity resonated with audiences who could distinguish between choreographed moves and genuine martial arts techniques. Snipes' fight scenes were not just about punches and kicks. They were a dance, a visual representation of his years of rigorous training. His moves weren't merely for cinematic spectacle. They showcased genuine technique, making his action sequences stand out with realism and finesse. But the influence of martial arts on Snipes' career wasn't limited to just physical prowess. It deeply impacted the way he approached his roles. Martial arts, at its core, is as much about the mind as it is about the body. The discipline, patience, and mental fortitude required in martial arts training translated into Snipes' method of character preparation and portrayal. He approached roles with a centeredness and depth, bringing an intensity and presence to the screen that few could match. One of the most evident manifestations of his martial arts background was in the Blade series, where Snipes portrayed a vampire hunter. Here, his martial arts expertise was on full display. The fluidity of his movements, combined with his intense portrayal of the character, made Blade a cult favorite. But it wasn't just the combat scenes. It was the discipline, the quiet strength, and the controlled aggression, all hallmarks of a seasoned martial artist, that Snipes brought to the role elevating Blade from a mere action hero to an iconic character in film lore. Controversies and run-ins with the law. Like many who ascend to the giddy heights of stardom, Wesley Snipes' journey was not without its shadows. As his career trajectory soared, so did the scrutiny of his personal and professional life. With success came controversies, and Snipes, with his magnetic presence, often found himself at the center of many. Big developments in the Wesley Snipes tax evasion case. Today, the U.S. Marshal in Orlando ordered the actor to report to prison next week. This latest move comes two weeks after a similar order from a federal magistrate in Ocala. On professional fronts, whispers of arrogance began to emerge. As his name became synonymous with box office success, there were murmurs from co-stars and crew members about his alleged high-handedness on set. For instance, during the filming of Blade Trinity, there were claims of Snipes' aloofness, with allegations that he would often communicate with the director, David Goyer, only through notes. The tensions ran so deep that Snipes eventually filed a lawsuit against the production studio, citing a lack of support and alleging that he was marginalized due to his race. Yet, the controversies weren't limited to film sets. In the glitzy world of Hollywood, rumors spread like wildfire, and one such rumor that caught the public's imagination was Snipes' supposed altercation with boxing legend Mike Tyson. The tale, as whispered in the corners of Tinseltown, spoke of a dramatic confrontation in a restaurant over a romantic interest. Snipes, at the height of his fame, was rumored to be dating a former flame of Tyson. I heard rumors about a fight with you and uh, um, uh, Wesley Snipes. But it didn't happen. It was uh, it, supposed what? to happen. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The boxer, upon discovering them together, allegedly invited Snipes to the restroom, where a physical altercation ensued. Both parties, however, have since denied the extent of the rumors, 
with Tyson himself clarifying in his autobiography that while there was a tense exchange, it didn't escalate to blows. But perhaps the most significant shadow cast over Snipes' illustrious career was his legal battle over tax evasion. In the mid-2000s, the actor found himself embroiled in a high-profile case, accused of evading millions in taxes. Wesley Snipes' trial on tax fraud charges started today in Ocala. Prosecutors say Snipes stopped paying taxes, then illegally claimed $11 million in refunds. Snipes defended himself by asserting he had been misled by his financial advisors. The trial was long and arduous, drawing significant media attention and painting Snipes not as the action hero beloved by many, but as a man facing serious allegations from the federal government. Despite his defense and subsequent appeals, in 2008, Snipes was sentenced to three years in prison for willful failure to file federal income tax returns. He began serving his sentence in 2010 and was released in 2013. The prison term, understandably, was a period of introspection for Snipes. Upon his release, he spoke candidly about the value of time, the lessons he learned while incarcerated, and his renewed appreciation for life and freedom. He expressed remorse, emphasizing how his time away from the limelight and his family gave him clarity on the impermanence of fame and the importance of choices. Blade, the Game Changer in the annals of cinematic history, certain roles become so intrinsically linked with an actor that it becomes nearly impossible to imagine anyone else in their stead. For Wesley Snipes, that defining role was Blade. The movie, and its subsequent sequels, did not just elevate Snipes' status in Hollywood, but also profoundly impacted the trajectory of the superhero film genre. Before the dawn of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the era of superhero dominance, the genre was met with skepticism. Many believed it to be a niche market, unlikely to generate massive box office returns. However, Blade, released in 1998, shattered these preconceived notions. It wasn't just a superhero film, it was a genre-blending masterpiece, weaving together elements of horror, action, and urban fantasy. Snipes brought to life the character of Blade, a half-human, half-vampire known as the Daywalker. With a unique ability to survive in daylight and a personal vendetta against vampires, Blade's character was intense, multidimensional, and deeply personal. Snipes, with his martial arts background, seamlessly incorporated high-octane action sequences, giving Blade an authenticity that resonated with audiences. His portrayal was raw and visceral, capturing the essence of a man torn between two worlds, constantly battling his inner demons. The first Blade movie was a commercial success, proving to naysayers that superhero films had a wide-reaching audience. Its unique narrative, coupled with Snipes' magnetic performance, made it a cult classic. The film was groundbreaking, not just in its storytelling, but in its representation. With Snipes in the lead, Blade became one of the first major superhero films with an African-American protagonist, paving the way for future diversity in the genre. The success of Blade inevitably led to sequels. Blade II, directed by the visionary Guillermo del Toro in 2002, delved deeper into the lore, introducing new characters and conflicts. This sequel was not just a rehash of the first film, but expanded the universe, exploring the intricacies of vampire hierarchies and Blade's place within them. Snipes, reprising his role, brought a depth to the character, exploring the complexities of his identity and his relationships. The film was both a critical and commercial success, further solidifying Blade as a cornerstone of the superhero film genre. While the third installment, Blade, Trinity, faced challenges both on and off screen and didn't receive the same acclaim as its predecessors, the legacy of the Blade series was already cemented. It had proven that superhero films could be mature, complex, and cater to an adult audience, laying the groundwork for future R-rated successes like Logan and Deadpool. But perhaps the most significant impact of the Blade series was its influence on the broader superhero genre. It showed studios that there was a thirst for well-crafted, character-driven superhero stories. Following its success, the early 2000s saw a surge in superhero films, including X-Men and Spider-Man, leading to what we now recognize as the golden age of superhero cinema. 
the decline of a superstar. The journey of a superstar is seldom a linear one. Peaks of immense popularity often intermingle with troughs of public scrutiny and professional setbacks. For Wesley Snipes, the zenith of his career in the late 90s and early 2000s was followed by a period of decline, a convergence of personal, professional, and legal challenges that overshadowed his cinematic brilliance. One of the most discernible causes for Snipes' decline was his selection of scripts during the mid-2000s. Following his monumental success with the Blade series, the actor ventured into films that did not resonate as strongly with audiences or critics. Movies such as The Detonator and The Contractor were received with lukewarm enthusiasm, neither garnering the acclaim nor the box office returns that had become synonymous with Snipes' name. These films, which often went straight to DVD, were perceived as pale reflections of his earlier masterpieces, causing a dent in his once stellar reputation. Simultaneously, on-set controversies began to tarnish his professional image. While Snipes was undeniably a powerhouse performer, rumors started circulating about his demeanor behind the scenes. Allegations of unprofessional behavior, most notably during the filming of Blade Trinity, were rife. Stories of Snipes staying in his trailer for hours, refusing to shoot scenes, or clashing with the director and co-stars emerged. These accounts painted a picture of an actor increasingly detached from his projects and co-workers, adding to the narrative of his declining commitment to his craft. But perhaps the most significant blow to Snipes' career was his legal woes. In 2006, he was charged with tax evasion, accused of failing to file tax returns for several years. The trial was widely publicized, casting Snipes not as the beloved actor and action hero, but as a man battling serious allegations. The case dragged on, capturing headlines and overshadowing his cinematic contributions. In 2008, Snipes was sentenced to three years in prison, a verdict that sent shockwaves throughout the entertainment industry. This conviction, more than any film flop or on-set dispute, marked the nadir of his career. The actor, once Hollywood royalty, was now incarcerated, his fall from grace both dramatic and public. During this tumultuous period, the changing landscape of Hollywood also played a role. The rise of a new generation of actors, combined with the evolution of the superhero genre, now dominated by the Marvel and DC cinematic universes, meant that Snipes' brand of action films faced fierce competition. The industry was evolving, and amidst his personal and professional challenges, Snipes struggled to find his footing in this new cinematic world. Life after prison and attempted comebacks. For many, a prison sentence can be the point of no return, a deep abyss from which resurgence seems impossible. But for Wesley Snipes, his time behind bars marked a phase of introspection, transformation, and eventual re-emergence. The resilient actor, who had graced the silver screen with unforgettable performances, was now faced with the challenge of rebuilding his life and career after serving time for tax evasion. Snipes' incarceration was undoubtedly a challenging period. Removed from the limelight and separated from his loved ones, he found himself navigating the confines of a federal prison. But in this stark environment, Snipes discovered a renewed appreciation for the impermanence of fame and the value of time. His reflections during this period were profound, focusing on the fleeting nature of success and the importance of personal integrity. As he would later express, one of the pivotal lessons he gleaned was the recognition of how time is often wasted and the significance of cherishing every moment with family and loved ones. Upon his release in 2013, Snipes was determined to re-enter the world with a clear vision and purpose. The entertainment industry, ever-evolving and fickle, awaited his return with a mix of anticipation and skepticism. For Snipes, the task at hand was not just to pick roles, but to select projects that would resonate with audiences and showcase his undiminished talent. One of his earliest forays back into mainstream cinema was with The Expendables 3. Joining an ensemble cast of action legends like Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and Jason Statham, Snipes seized the opportunity to reintroduce himself to a global audience. His character, Doc Death, was met with appreciation, with many praising his performance as a highlight of the film. 
The movie served as a significant comeback, a testament to Snipes' enduring appeal and his ability to hold his own alongside other icons of the action genre. Yet, Snipes wasn't just content with returning to familiar territory. He sought roles that would challenge him and diversify his portfolio. His collaboration with Spike Lee in Chi Rack was a testament to this, as he delved into a socially relevant narrative, focusing on gang violence in Chicago. The film, though met with mixed reviews, showcased Snipes' versatility and his commitment to exploring diverse narratives. However, it was his role in Coming to America, the sequel to the beloved classic Coming to America, that truly marked Snipes' return to comedic roles. Starring alongside Eddie Murphy, Snipes embraced the character of General Izzy with gusto, delivering a performance replete with comedic timing and charisma. For many fans, seeing Snipes in a comedic role after years was a delightful throwback, reminding them of his earlier films where he effortlessly oscillated between action and humor, legacy and current status. In the pantheon of Hollywood greats, Wesley Snipes occupies a distinctive space. With a career spanning over three decades, he has given cinema some of its most memorable characters and has influenced an entire generation of actors and filmmakers. While his journey has been punctuated with highs and lows, the totality of his work and his enduring influence makes him a figure of significance in the world of entertainment. Snipes' legacy is multifaceted. To action enthusiasts, he's the formidable daywalker from Blade, showcasing martial arts prowess and intense dramatic depth. To those who appreciate nuanced performances, he's the actor who's shown brilliantly in films like Jungle Fever and New Jack City, proving his mettle beyond the action realm. And yet, to another set of audiences, he's the comedic talent from White Men Can't Jump and Coming to America. However, Snipes' influence extends beyond his on-screen roles. He has been a trailblazer for African-American actors in Hollywood. At a time when diverse roles were limited, Snipes broke barriers, taking on leading roles in mainstream films, thereby paving the way for future actors of color. His success challenged the prevailing norms, proving that actors of color could lead major film franchises and achieve significant box office success. Additionally, his expertise in martial arts revolutionized action choreography in Hollywood. By blending traditional martial arts with cinematic storytelling, Snipes added authenticity to his roles. His influence can be seen in subsequent action films where realism in fight sequences became a sought-after trait. Despite the controversies and setbacks, Snipes' ability to bounce back and reinvent himself is a testament to his tenacity. The post-prison phase of his career is a reflection of his commitment to his craft and his adaptability. Even when faced with personal and professional challenges, Snipes continued to evolve, seeking roles that resonated with his artistic sensibilities and the changing dynamics of the industry.